Hey there everyone, my name is Bailey Sutton and thank you so much for joining us today. We're so grateful that you're choosing to spend part of your weekend with us. Now I'd like to take a moment and fill you in on a few things you need to know about here at Lifehouse Fellowship. If you're new here, please go to lifehousefellowship.net and fill out our digital connect card. We'd love to be able to get to know you. To give securely with your mobile device, text LHF to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. You can also go to lifehousefellowship.net and click give, or you can mail in a gift to P.O. Box 81172, Midland, Texas 79708. During this season, connection is more important now than ever. Life groups are where faces become friends. It's an opportunity to grow spiritually and relationally. We have life group directories available at the Connection Center. Be sure to grab one today and get plugged in. 
Lifehouse Fellowship is committed to fulfill our God-given vision to encourage, equip, and empower believers to change the world. And our teams are the heart of this house. No matter your giftings, talents, or skills, there's a team you can connect to so that you can grow while helping others connect to the kingdom. God has brought each one of us together to reach people in our community so that they can know Jesus and He wants to work through you. Don't wait. Join a team today and discover the amazing adventure that awaits. Join us Sunday, February 7th, as we welcome our special guest speaker, Pastor Rusty Gray. We hope to see you there. The 2020 anointing service made all the difference in how we made it through the year. Join us again this year, Sunday, February 21st. Receive an impartation of the power of God to carry you through all that is to come in 2021. You do not want to miss this. During this season of tentative planning, we want to encourage you to stay connected with us through our website, app, and our social media accounts. Hey guys, this is Pastor Jeremy Sutton here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. Thank you for joining us this fine Wednesday afternoon. We're so glad that you came and are a part of what God is doing here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. You know we're not meeting uh, together, but we have decided in this season to come and bring our ministry on Wednesday nights to online service. And so uh, we've had a lot of people interact. And so I want to ask you to do a couple of things for me. Number one, would you just hit some, uh, would you hit some thumbs up? If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're watching on Facebook or any other of our platforms, please let us know how we're doing. Please share this video with your friends. Please share this on your, on your page. We would certainly appreciate it. Also, throughout my ministry time tonight, I will have staff watching, and they're going to be online watching tonight with you and if there are any questions you have any prayer requests you have uh, make sure to type that out make sure to let us know we want to be uh, church we want to be help we want to be a supply to you and so we're so thankful that you joined us tonight what an honor and a privilege it is to come into your homes we're going to continue on our journey on Wednesday nights for the next several Wednesday nights talking about being marked the cost of discipleship last week I talked to you about your assignment I talked about your purpose in life and I just want to just remind you about those your purpose in life what when you get saved you know when you check the box of I'm going to heaven and not hell and 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 you get saved um, and, and then you get filled with the Holy Ghost and, and you begin to dig into his word and find out who you are in Christ and you begin to understand the authority of the believer. You begin to understand that there are promises that Jesus, uh, he, he just, he just makes available to you and I, the Christians, his followers, his disciples, when you and I understand the power that comes with with just being a follower of Christ a disciple of Christ an apprentice of Christ a pupil that the kingdom uh, and and all the things that have been hidden for kingdom followers begin to unlock for you and I, I I've heard it said that that the kingdom is a fail-safe system. <laughs> There's so many that wanna wanna have the the at you know the the accolades, and they would like to have the the blessings that come with being a follower, but they're not willing to go through the process. And uh, and so tonight we're we're gonna be talking about a few things concerning the process as a disciple, as a follower. And, and so I'm, I'm with you, and I talked to you last week about your purpose. I talked to you about your assignment. And so we checked the boxes of salvation. We checked the boxes of being a disciple and being filled with the Holy Spirit. But it's a continual process. And so my purpose in life, my purpose in life is to know God. Your purpose in life is to know God, okay? How do I know God? How do I get to know him even more? You know, the angels, they, they go around his throne. In Revelation, it talks about how the angels, 
they travel around the throne of God and they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They say, worthy is the Lamb. And the and, and, and way John describes these angels and when they say holy and when they, they go around the throne of God saying, holy, holy, worthy is the Lamb of God. What John's portrayal of what he saw as the angels are circling around the throne of God is they see another dimension of who Jesus is. They see another dimension of who God is. You know, when I see, uh, uh, see a picture or I'm outside and I'm looking at a tree, right? I just want to use this as an example. I see this side of the tree. <clears throat> But maybe I see the south side of the tree, but I move toward the north side and look back to, I see the north side of the tree. And that tree takes on different, different pictures. It takes on different forms based on where I move around that tree. And that's the same thing that's happening in heaven, when the angels are circling around the throne of God, they're seeing God in different aspects. They're seeing God in different, they're perceiving him differently. They're seeing another uh, part of who he is. And, and the way you and I as disciples get to know God is by getting into his presence. Your presence, your presence, when, when you show up, Things change, right? Because you've got Jesus and, and the way I make him known, my, per my assignment is to know him. My purpose is to know him, excuse me, and my assignment is to make him known. So as I begin to know him, as I, as I begin to spend time in his presence, as I begin to get into his word, as I begin to get around the family of God, I get to see God for who he is. I get to see his love, his mercy, his kindness. I get to see the joy earlier today, me and Sydney, who's on the other side of this camera, we just got to laughing because of, you know, my goof ups. <laughs> but it's so funny because I, I thought to myself, isn't it great I have people around me that love me for who I am, not for what I can do. And I just think that's what the Lord loves about us. And he just, he loves us because of who we, because of how we see him, not for what he can do for us. If salvation was the only thing we were ever to get, get from the Lord, to not spend eternity in hell, that is enough. But it doesn't stop there as disciples, does it? It doesn't stop there as, as marked people. And so there is a cost though. David said, I will not bring anything to God that doesn't cost me something. So my, my purpose in life, your purpose in life is to know God. And when you enter into his presence, when you enter in, you know, it's a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice of diligence and saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into my word. I'm gonna shut off all the outside things and get into his presence because that's where my life has changed. So my, my purpose is to know God, and I said it earlier, my assignment is to make him known to others. And that's where we're talking. That's what we're going to be talking about today is making Jesus known to others. Before I get into a word, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for my friends. I thank you for our partners who are joined together tonight in this holy moment where your word is being proclaimed. And I pray that there are people listening right now, that they have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now in this season. May the word come alive to them. May the word challenge them right there where they're at. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you. Amen. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, with me to Luke chapter five, Luke chapter five. You know, there's a great app out there called the Bible app. Make sure you download the Bible app if you don't have it. It's a great 
tool for you to grow in your discipleship walk with the Lord. Luke chapter 5, verse 27 through 32. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi, which is Matthew, by the way, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he left all, rose up, and followed him. And then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with him. And their scribes and their Pharisees complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician. But those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I love this scripture. I love this encounter. And really, this is the mission of the church. Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You know, as disciples, you and I are called to come up higher. <laughs> You know, Jesus said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And so, and so what is he saying essentially in that scripture? He's saying it's time to move up. It's time to get out of our old way of thinking. It's time to let go of the old thoughts of the past and move forward in him. And, and so what we have in church many times is a lot of people occupying <laughs> the sick pet, the sick beds of the of the church, and and they, and they're well and they're whole, but they refuse to get well and whole. Many of them, uh, they've refused to get off the bed of, uh, of unforgiveness. They refuse to get off the bed of offense. They refuse to get off the bed of fear. They refuse to get off the bed. Uh, uh, I'm talking about delivered people. I'm talking about people that Jesus has come to set them free, but they refuse to get off the bed. Well, I've tried that before, Pastor. <laughs> well, I've done that before. I've heard this so many times. I've been hurt in church. Welcome. Welcome to the club. <laughs> well, the last pastor I had hurt me. I know. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. I'm so sorry that that happened. I'm so sorry that people that were occupying the, the beds of the church who were whole hurt you but I believe there's hope for you God wants to do something amazing in you God wants to do something amazing through you as a discipled one as one who has said Lord I'm forsaking it all for the sake of the call I'm I'm going to lay it down and Matthew's doing something and and and, and Jesus begins to say follow me Matthew follow me follow me lay it all down follow me and what does Matthew do he lays it all down and many of us we've got to learn to lay it all down come up off the hospital bed called the church uh, it, it, within the church and, and, and rise up to be who God's called us to be. Let it go. It's time to walk in health and healing. Amen. Someone say amen. Amen. So last week we talked about three, three major things. And, and we talked about how as disciples you and I are called to be with God. Number one. Number two, we are called to become like him. And number three, we are called to do what he does. That's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Be with God, become like him, and then do what he does. So when you and I follow Jesus, we become students. We become apprentices of Jesus. And ordering our lives around those three, those three primary purposes, being with God, becoming like God, and doing what the Son of Man does, okay? Uh, so this week, we're going to study Jesus' radical call to you and I to follow him, all right? 
So just go ahead and write that down. Jesus calls me to do the radical thing. <laughs> Jesus calls me to do something pretty special, pretty advantageous, and it's worth it. Okay? Jesus had been teaching in this house according to the scriptures we've just read. He'd been teaching in a house when a group of men carried their paralyzed friend to be healed by him. But so many people had gathered in the house to hear Jesus teach that the men could not get their friend close to Jesus. So what did they do? They climbed up on the roof, made a hole in the roof, and they lowered their friend down to Jesus, and Jesus healed him. And amazement filled the room, and, and all that were present there were, were shocked. <laughs> And as Jesus headed out to the Sea of Galilee in Mark chapter 2, 13 and 14, he sees Matthew. So Jesus is, is doing what he's doing. He's, he's entered his earthly ministry and, 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 and he performs this great miracle. And then Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32 takes place and, and he sees Matthew. And, and as it was recorded in, in, in Mark and Luke, and John, uh, <clears throat> he sees the tax collector. And as Jesus was walking out, he passed by a tax booth. And he saw Matthew and he said, follow me. I wish it was that simple. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. How many people have ran into at the grocery store, at the gas station? And, you know, there's a drawing and... And I, I just want to handle my business card and say, hey, man, I don't want it. I, I just want you to be a part of what we're doing at LifeHouse. And they, you know, some of them are like, yeah, we'll do it. And we never see them again. And then there are some you, you, you invite and they'll show up to church. And you thought, I never thought they would darken the door of our church. But they do, right? And so, so but can you imagine here Jesus, the Son of God, passing by the tax collector. I mean, Matthew was fine. He was financially well. He was in a, he was in a place of st stability, it seemed like, right? What in, in our eyes looked like he had no need at all. But when the master passed his way and said, follow me, evidently there was a, a burning on the inside of Matthew. Evidently there was a void on the inside of Matthew that needed to be filled and only the master could fill it. And he says, follow me, Matthew. And so Matthew begins to follow Jesus according to Luke chapter 5, verse 27. So Matthew's response was simple. He got up, he left everything, and he followed Jesus. He got up, he left everything, and he followed Jesus. I ask this question today. Have you gotten up? Have you left everything to follow Jesus? <laughs> Have you got up? left everything and follow Jesus? That's a powerful question. Have you got up? Have you dropped everything to follow Jesus? What some will say, well, you know, I'm not living in those times, pastor. I, I mean, you're asking me to do something pretty big. As a disciple, there's a cost to get up, leave everything, and to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is not complicated, church. Following Jesus is not complicated, friends. But it is challenging. It will challenge you. <laughs> it begins with the decision to believe that Jesus is. To believe that what Jesus has done in your life is worth leaving and attaching to his plan for you. Um, it's a decision to turn away from our previous way of living and to embrace the life and teaching of Christ. However, being a follower of Jesus is a lifelong journey and adventure with God. It cannot be limited to merely going to a meeting on Sunday. 
listening to a podcast, reading the latest best-selling books, or reciting certain creeds. And let me tell you, those are all well in themselves, but those will still leave a void. Let me, let, let me keep on. Those things will not be accompanied in a few weeks or even a year, uh, excuse me, accomplished uh, it, in a lifestyle change, they may help you create a theology or may help you move up. But let me tell you, true transformation happens in the life of a believer when you get into his presence. Some will say amen. When you're in the community of believers, when you're being changed by the Holy Spirit. It's easy to miss something vital in this story and we're... And that's where I'm trying to get, get us as a, a believers to hear. Jesus' invitation to Matthew would have been highly offensive to the Jewish religious leaders. And as a tax collector for the Roman Empire, Matthew would have been viewed as a collaborator with Israel's enemy and a traitor. Yet Jesus did not exclude Matthew from the call of discipleship. Let's keep on. So in response to Jesus' kindness and acceptance, Matthew put together a great feast for Jesus at his home. And at this banquet, a large company of tax collectors and others, which we just read in Luke chapter 5, verse 29, they reclined at this table with Jesus and his other disciples. And, and there were the, these Pharisees who were also at this feast that were offended and they complained upon Jesus sharing this meal with tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> I love that scripture that where Jesus says he uses the simple things of this world to confound the wise. When Jesus heard them questioning his disciples about why he would eat and drink with such people, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick... I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Jesus does not limit his invitation to those who have a nice, clean life and background. No, if anything, Jesus seems to do just the opposite. He calls sinners. He calls, the, he calls those that, that need healing. He calls those that need a Savior to come up to the, from the background to the forefront. Jesus came not for the whole, but for the wounded, not for the perfect, but for the but but for those who are down and out. Not for the healed, but for those who are sick, not for those who are, are clean, but those who've had failures in their past. What does Jesus do? He's the great physician. He heals. <laughs> he takes care of. He restores. He renews. He refreshes. Man, thank God for that. But the right, but but here, here's where we miss it many times. The religious crowd quickly becomes offended by Jesus' willingness to associate with tax collectors and sinners. They are repulsed that he can allow them to draw near near to him. And the, there's a there's a book that Rachel Evans wrote. And this is what she said. What makes the gospel offensive isn't who it keeps out, but who it lets in. Think about that for a moment. What makes the gospel offensive to the religious is not who it keeps out, but who it lets in. You know, I... I think about life around here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. I think about growing up in church and being a, um, my grandpa being a pastor and, and growing up around the church. Oh, you know, as, as teenagers, <laughs> we, we were just rambunctious. We, I know if you've been in church very long, you know, you 
I just had this thought where I remember being around the church and and I'd be so hungry and thirsty. I'd go to the <laughs> the refrigerator at the church and all there would be was crackers and and Welch's grape juice. <laughs> that was my snack. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I knew it was communion elements, but man, I was hungry and thirsty. <laughs> Don't look at me that way. <laughs> My point is, being raised in church and being brought up in the church, there were things that, you know, we did in church that, you know, my grandpa, he'd get so mad at me and he'd be like, who drank all the, <laughs> who drank all the juice? Who ate all the crackers? I was hungry. I was thirsty. And, uh, you know, uh, oh, we was always doing something. <laughs> I say we. <laughs> I was always doing something. Uh, but one of the things that I've learned around here at the church, you know, as we've gone through this season called COVID, where we've had to social distance and we've had to do some certain things, we've we've had babies in our church. We've had young kids in our church, uh, in the services on Sunday morning, and 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 man, it it could get pretty loud with the the babies crying, and and I've I mean I've seen kids run across the front, <laughs> and I'm like, moms and dads, relax. It's okay, chill out. It's going to be all right. And, and I'm reminded of this story I once heard about this janitor. He was at a church camp. And somebody overheard him talking to himself. And this is what he I sure could get a lot more done around here if it weren't for all these kids running around. <laughs> While we might laugh about this story, I, I want to... I want to say to the janitor that's running the kids' camp, you're out of kids' camp. <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, and, and, and your job, <laughs> Mr. Janitor, <laughs> is to clean up after these kids. And if we don't have kids to serve, then we don't have a job. Right? And so I, I thought that was funny. What what happens when the teens, you know, uh, you know, they don't clean up after themselves. I get it. I understand it. But it does us no good to complain and argue about, you know, the kids dropped animal crackers or they spilt their juice or they made a mess in the bathroom. That's what happens. I know people have here at Lifehouse, they've gotten very uncomfortable because we may have a crying baby in our sanctuary. We're in a different season right now. We show a little bit of love. We show a little bit of grace. We understand. I'm just so thankful people would come and sit and just be a part of what God is doing here at Lifehouse Fellowship. Just being in the atmosphere where miracles can happen, where Life can take on a new meaning for someone. Who knows, that may be the, the first place of peace this parent has had this whole week. So we as the body of Christ, we as believers, we need to relax. We need to say, okay, God, we understand. I think about my grandpa, you know. Man, he was so hard. <laughs> he was a good guy. He was a great pastor. He loved people. But when it came to teenagers being rambunctious in the church, it just didn't happen. <laughs> he didn't like it at all. He didn't like it if we was running down the halls or, you know, we was, you know, playing pranks or what have you. You know, there's got to be, there's got to be reverence. I get it. I understand. But sometimes I think we take it to a ditch. We allow religion to dictate to us how we are to respond. And I want to move you from religion. I want to move you from how these 
Pharisees were even speaking to Matthew about the, even the tax collectors and, and, and the, the sinners that Jesus was eating with and breaking bread with. And that, that powerful, powerful quote at the end, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but, but sinners to repentance. You see, sometimes as disciples, we get it all backwards. So no matter your past, no matter your present, no matter how wounded and messed up you may be, and no matter what you think or feel, Nothing has disqualified you from answering Jesus' invitation to follow him and be marked. Nothing has disqualified you. Just as Jesus called the tax collector, just as Jesus called the sinner as he was sitting and eating dinner with them, I believe Jesus is calling you and I to come up higher and to change our way of thinking. Jesus is offering this invitation to you and I today. I, as I close tonight, I, I want to help you to understand that how can I move you to action? How can I move you to response, to, to be more involved? And what God is doing. There are so many opportunities for you to share Jesus, to, to, to be a disciple, not a silent disciple, but a vocal disciple, an active disciple. Would you respond to discipleship tonight, being more like him? doing what Jesus does. I hope tonight you are inspired to say, I'm going to get off the sidelines. I'm going to get out of the hospital beds of the church and I'm going to move into action. I'm going to make room for the sick. I'm going to make room for the sinner to come in to the church and to get well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to come up. And I hope tonight you are inspired to come up. <sighs> there is a cost. But just like Matthew, he laid it all down. He laid it all down. He laid down security. He laid down safety. He laid down money to pick up the call of Christ. I don't believe God is asking you to lay a bunch down, but I believe what he's asking you, will you follow him and work for him? Tonight, I love you so much. And I ask that you will respond by saying yes to Jesus. I'm here. Use me as you will. I'm available. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all those that are watching tonight. May they be blessed. In their searching, may they find. In their seeking and knocking, may the door open up to them to see who you are. May those watching tonight come off the sidelines and get involved in the game be a part of this end time move, this end time revival, to see souls saved, to see lives changed, to see miracles, signs, and wonders take place right before our very eyes and to watch you, King Jesus, at work in me to others. May we answer the call. We love you so much. Right there where you're at, would you just raise your hands to heaven?
Tell Jesus you love him. I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much. I love you, Father. Amen. Tonight, make sure you share this post, this feed with others. I believe there's life change that's taking place even right now as I'm speaking. If you are being changed and you're saying, Pastor, I want to get involved. I want to be involved. I want to do what God's called me to do. I'm tired of being on the sidelines. I want to get involved. I want to be a disciple that's actively pursuing and being, being a vital part. I want you to give us a call here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. I want you to give Miss Amy a call at 262-LIFE, 262-LIFE. And when you call, ask for Miss Amy Lewis and say, Miss Amy, I'm ready to get involved in the game. I'm ready to get busy about what God has called me to do here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church. How can I get on a team? And she's gonna help you. And then let her run with it. She'll direct you, she'll point you in the right direction, get you with the right people who will help you get involved. I love you so much. I'm so glad to be your pastor. I'm so glad that you're a part of our lives. We got great things to do in 2021 and it's gonna be a great year. I love you so much. Remember church, great days are here and greater days are ahead. God bless you. Well, to all of you that joined us today, I want to say thank you for allowing us to meet you where you're at. Have a blessed week, and remember, greater days are ahead.